Hey guys, what's up? Today we are back with a model explanation and a paper review video. The model we are going to explain is VIT, which stands for Visual Transformers. And the paper we are going to look at is, is the paper that VIT got introduced, which is N Images Word 16 to 16 Words Transformer for Image Recognition at Scale. I also did a video where I implemented VIT from scratch. I intend that that video and this video will complement each other so that you will learn how VIT works, the maths behind it, and also you implement it in code. That's the idea. For this video will be two parts. The first part will I will explain the VIT and the intuitions behind it. Mainly it will be on this diagram and at this section. The second part will be the paper overview. We will go over the paper and we will look at some experiments. Before I begin, if you like the videos, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. It helps a lot. So without further talking, let's get into it. Let's say that we have an image of size 224 to 224 with three channels. Okay, this is the second channel and this is the third channel, X3. Let's zoom in a bit. This is our input image. So now let's put the channels into names. Width is 224, height is 224, and the number of channels denoted by C is 3. Next thing we are going to need is we are going to work with patches. So first we need to decide the size of the patch. For this I will denote the size of the patch as 16, which means that height and width of the each patch is 16 to 16. Okay. Size of the patch is 16. Actually, this the paper uses patch size of 16 frequently, and that is where the name of the paper actually comes from. Images wrote 16 to 16 words, which is a patch because we are treating the patch as tokens as, or as words to feed into the transformers. The next thing we, that comes into mind is that we have to calculate the number of patches. How many patches we have? So let's say number of patches and let's denote it as n and we need a formula. How we are going to do that is that we are going to divide our main image into sub images. We can do it by start with like horizontally 16, 16, 16, 16, and then we can divide it vertically 16, 16, 16, 16. So the first thing we did is we divided it with to 16. And we divide the height to 16. So in short, by the way, let's make it a formula and make it P, say this P. After we divide it width to the patch size, we just did it for the other side of the image. So we can just square it. For our case, it is 224 divided by 16 squared, which is 196. So we have total number of 196 patches. So let's just visualize how they look like. We have the first patch, X1, second patch, X2, and goes all the way to the patch 196. They have the dimensions of patch size to patch size to number of channels. We can see this here, okay? For example, this is a patch, patch P2P with three channels. So it has a size of P2P to three. This is patch, by the way. In our case, its dimensions are 16 to 16 to 3. Okay. So the images look like this. One, two, three channels with patches. Okay. This is how this layer looks like. We did this. Now it's time for the linear projection of flattened patches. Now we want to make them vectors make all the patches vectors and flatten them so we can just say this flatten how we are to f how we are going to flatten them is that basically we are going to multiply them so we are going to multiply p by p by 3 which is p square c in our case it becomes 768 if we visualize it it becomes a vector like this 768 
So basically we did take, took this patch, flattened it by multiplying it and it gave us this vector. And this is the second vector. So we can come up with a formula like this. For xp is inside one of, in the dimensions of n, which is the number of patches, comes from here. To p square c, which is the dimensions of the flattened vector, which comes from here. To better see this, how the each patch and the vectors look like, we can just zoom in here and show it like this, x1, x2 to x196 and the vector of 768, 768 and another vector of 768. So this is how the linear projection of flattened patches look like and what they do, how it works. We did that too. Now it's time for here. For this part, all the light layered squares you see are actually these vectors, okay? These flattened vectors. And the dark colored squares are the position embeddings. What position embeddings are? Are that uh, they are just embeddings that convey the positional information. We don't want to lose the positional information, so we just put them. It actually comes from BERT. We use that in BERT too. And we merge it with the patches. So we end up with this layer. One thing that may catch your attention is this, this asterisk. The paper explains it as extra learnable class embedding, but what does it mean? It actually comes from, again, NLP. It is like if you are working with transformers and you are doing a classification, you put the information of all the embeddings, all the tokens here to this first embedding. Okay. When you are training the model, when you are doing the inference, you work with this one token and it is a learnable parameter. So you are constantly updating it. Also, this is called the CLS token too. What we do with the CLS token is we feed it, we feed everything transformer encoder. But in the end, we feed the CLS token to the MLP head with this classifier. And it classifies this token, one of the predefined classes, whether it is Bert, Ball, Carl, whatever you are working with. So in short, we can say that this token in the beginning represents the whole image, conveys the information of the whole image. And after that, we did this too, MLP head is just classifies the token for us to one of these predefined classes. So this is the diagram and this is the inner workings. Now let's just verify our models with what formally explained in the paper in the section 3.1 vision transformer VIT. So we have an image like this. Okay, paper says this is our input image. We define that. And we put, we put them into flattened 2D patches. And this is what the 2D patches looks like. Actually, we did that in here. As you can see, they are the same. Each patch contains the N, which is not the resulting number of patches, to the P squared C, which is the size of the flattened layer. The only difference you may see is that when calculating number of patches, our formula looks a little bit different. Actually, it is not different because here height and width are the same. So instead of this, we can say height divided by P squared, which is just the same as how we calculated the number of patches. So let's continue. Similar to Bert's class token, like we mentioned now, we are talking about the star here, the first token. We prepared a learnable embedding to the sequence of embedding patches, which serves as the image representation of Y. So what it's talking about is that it is talking about the CLS token here. In the beginning, we encoded all the information here. It is a learnable embedding. 
and serves as the image representation of Y. So we did the classification on that token. After that, it gives information about position embeddings. Position embeddings are added to the patch embeddings to retain positional information. Like we mentioned here. Let's go here. Oops, not this. Like we mentioned here. Position embeddings are merged with the patches to retain the positional information. And here it talks about how the NMLP works in here. This mutilated perceptron, oops. This mutilated perceptron. It uses a galley activation and it's just a mutilated perceptron. Now it's time for the two additional information that this section gives us. First is inductive bias. It like a comparison with CNN, but it says that Vision Transformer has more image specific inductive bias than CNNs. And it proposes another architecture, not another architecture, but another approach here as hybrid approach. What it does is instead of fe feeding the raw patches, we can feed the feature maps from the CNNs. And this is an, as an alternative method as a hybrid architecture. So in overall, this is the VIT, this is the visual transformers. We take the image, we put them into patches, we calculate how many patches it has, we flatten them, we merge them with position embeddings, we put everything into the first token, CLS token, the learnable parameter, we feed that learnable parameter to transformer encoder, after that mutile perceptronet, it classifies that token for us, which is the classification of the image. And after that, we end up with these classes. With that out of the way, let's look at the paper and do an overview. So let's go to the beginning to abstract. So abstract tells us why do we need the vision transformers. After that, that it says relying on CNN is not necessary. After that, it tells us when the VIT shines, when it pre trained with large amounts of data and transformed to multiple mid size or small image recognition benchmarks. Basically, where it shines is its the pre training stage. And it also mentions that it requires fewer resources to train. Now, introductions tells us what is transformers in the first paragraph, then goes on to how the transformers are being used in computer vision or it is being used at all. And in the third paragraph, it starts to explain how they did it. As we saw in the VIT explanation, they split an image, let's write in green, split an image into patches and provide the sequence of linear embeddings to, the, to these patches to the transformer and they are treated the same way as tokens in an NLP application. Like we mentioned, that's why 16 to 16 words, they treat these patches, images as words in the NLP. And it gets a bit interesting here. They mentioned that when they train it on mid-sized data sets, such as Im ImageNet, their accuracy is lack compared to CNN models. Okay, we can see it here. They yield modest accuracies of three percentage below ResNet. So, and they continue to explain this reason. They lack some indicative bias inherited to CNNs. So, when you are training with small data without like a large pre training data set in the background, the VITs perform poorer. That's what they are trying to say us here. And after that, it says it shines, it shines when attains excellent results or pre-trained at sufficient scale and transferred to a different task with different data points. This is like how the regular transformers work. We train it on a large scale data set and we transfer it to a smaller data set. It continues to talk about the related work. We already explained the VIT and how it works. Here we mentioned indicative bias and it, like just like just we read, this is the reason why at small data sets VIT performs poorer the, the compared to other state of art models. And it's time for a fine-tuning and high resolution. Now we are switching to experiment parts. 
Here they note that it is often beneficial to high tune with higher resolution images than the pre-training. So when you are pre-training, the low resolution images are okay, but after the fine tuning stage, you have to provide more higher resolution images. Like by the way, the pre-training and the fine tuning may be confusing, but let me explain like this. Pre-training is you have a large model, okay? You feed it with large data without any specific task usually, but in this case, it is classification test. And after that, you put some data on specific domain, specific data, and you pre-train it accordingly. And this is usually a small data when you're pre-training and the large data is like its name, it is large. What this does is that the models learn how images look like in the pre-training and after that you sh so show some samples in much fewer number and they just they can just know where to look for and what is what. When feeding images of high resolution, they keep the page size same so that it gives us larger uh, sequence length. This is true because like you remember we calculated it with VP squared since if it is higher, this all value is higher. It also mentions that uh, when this becomes too long, the, pre the position embeddings may no longer be useful. And uh, so they apply some interpolation to mitigate that. And after that, we turn into experiment section. So experiments are conducted with three models. We can see here. This is just like BERT. We have base variant, large variant, and huge variant. These are the number of layers, the hidden size, multi-layer perceptron size, number of attention apps, and the number of parameter they have. According to those, we, they will conduct experiments. And the model variants are explained here. When they say VITL16, it means that it is a large model with page size of 16. Here we can see some training setups which optimizer used, with which values, with lear which learning rate, etc. Now the important part is here in the comparison of the VIT with the other state-of-art models. This table. So the top part is pre-training data set. Okay. We pre-train these models at the second column, like VIT huge, large, large ResNet and efficient ResNet with the top data sets. And after that, we fine tune them with the data set on the left. And then we look at the scores. We can see that the VIT huge overperforms all of the at all of the other models, including VIT, and it performs much higher compared to other models like ResNet or EfficientNet. Let's look at, for example, the ImageNet Real, it is 88%, 88.4, and 87. And other VITs are 85 and 83. It is always the higher, just this case is an exception. In this case, another VIT, which is VIT large, overperforms, but with a very small margin. And also another important note is, aside from the performance, okay, because performance may not be the huge deal every time. Look at the training times. These training times are given here, trained on TPU V3 and report the number of cores taken they taken to pre-train each of them. Okay. And we can see here is that the VITs are much faster to train compared to other models. Look at this. The huge model, the biggest model with the largest number of parameters are at least six times slower compared to efficient net and around four times uh, faster, sorry, and around four times faster compared to ResNet. So basically we get a model which is faster and faster to train and performs better. And here we can see some graphs and their performances with other models as comparison. Here we get, see the pre-training requirements and experiment details. Here we have graphs showing the accuracies on ImageNet with pre-training with comparable datasets. As we can see here, 
the more data we put to the VITs, the more better it performs. Here we can see the hybrid model, hybrid model performance differences. And then we talk about how do we scale and these are the attention where the does the model puts the attention and so on and the conclusion. So I guess in this video we are we learn how the VIT works and how it is compared, how well it is compared to the other state of art models. So that's all for today. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments and hit the like button and subscribe. See you next time.